Hey everyone, today we're going to talk to you about how to back up the files on your Windows 10 PC. Now, there are many ways that you can do this, including some online tools or some paid for pieces of software, but actually there's a great tool built into Windows 10 that's absolutely free. So today we're going to have a look at how you can set that up and how easy it is. Let's get into it. Okay. So the two things that you're going to need today are your Windows computer and your external drive. This one here happens to be a Seagate USB drive. Um, there are many different options of these available. The simple rule is to make sure that this drive is bigger than the drive that you've got in your computer, and that way you won't have any challenges when it comes to doing a backup. What we'll do is we'll post some examples of the different drives that are available in the description below, and hopefully you can find one in there that suits the project that you need. So let's have a look at how to get it set up. Over here on the left-hand side, we're just gonna pop down to the Windows logo and you'll see the settings cog right here. Give that a click. And in the middle, we're gonna see the options for update and security. Give that a click. And on the left-hand side, backup. Okay, now what we need to do is add the drive in. So the first thing we're gonna do is connect the USB drive. Now, what you might find is that you've got a number of USB cables available on your computer. When you have a look at those, some of them might have this symbol here. It almost looks like a little SS logo. That is a high-speed USB port. Now, we don't need to get into the technicalities, but if your computer has one of those ports, and let's say you've got a few different ones available, but one of them has that little logo on the top, I'd recommend that you connect the drive there because that is a high-speed port, and so any backups that we do or any files that we need to get back, that's going to happen really quickly. Okay, so once the drive's connected, we're gonna pop over here and press add a drive. Now, sometimes you may see this where it says no usable drives found, and that's if this drive is, is fresh out of the box and maybe it's ready for Windows and Mac devices, it might just not be ready for your computer. Really, really simple to fix, don't worry. We're gonna pop down here to the search box and we're just gonna start typing the word disk. You should see an option that says create and format hard disk partitions. Click there and just say yes to this next box that pops up. Okay, and down at the bottom, you'll see the extra drive. Disk one, 14,000 gigabytes. That's this one that we brought today. And you'll see there's some unallocated space. Click here and then press the right mouse button and we're looking for a new simple volume. Now, there's a wizard that pops up, real simple here. It's just next to everything. So next, next, next again and finish. And what you'll see is that Windows will now make this drive ready so that it can be used. And you'll see a little sign down here at the bottom when it's finished. There we are, healthy basic partition. That's it, we'll only ever have to do that once. So click the cross and let's come back to adding a drive. Add a drive and now you can see straight away, here's our new drive, drive D, 14 terabytes. Lots of storage for our backup. We'll give that a click. And straight away, you can see that Windows has said, we're gonna automatically back up my files. It's turned that on, we're ready to go. Let's have a look at some of the options though. Click here for more options. And up at the top, we're gonna to get a little overview. Now we haven't done a backup yet. So it says that size of the backup is zero. The data hasn't been backed up yet. That's fine, we're all aware. Um, but we've got a few options down here. Now the first one I'd like to call out is just the folders. Again, Windows has been quite clever and said, I'm gonna pick all the most likely folders that you are going to use. So this is your downloads, your favorites, your contacts, any documents, anything that's on the desktop. It's already gone and been intelligent enough to pick out all of your important files. So this is already a great selection. You can add and remove from this list if you want to, but I think out of the box, it's a pretty good shout. One of the interesting things I've noticed is that it's spotted that I'm using OneDrive now, if you're familiar with OneDrive and Office 365, you'll know that it does actually back up your files from this computer into the cloud. Now, I say backup, it's not really a backup. It does take a copy of the files off this computer and it does store them in the cloud for you. But if I was to delete anything from this computer inside OneDrive, it would also be deleted from my OneDrive in the cloud. So it's not really a backup in that regard. 
what I do like to do is make sure that my OneDrive folder and any other folders in this list are backed up to this separate drive. And that way I know if anything is deleted from here, either accidentally or maliciously, I've got a separate copy that I can fall back to. And I don't have to worry about, did I delete it here? Did I delete it in the cloud? That's not a problem. It's all safe and sound on this drive for me. The other thing that we can change is how often it does the backup and how long that we keep those backups for. Now, again, you can see the recommended settings is every hour, and that's absolutely fine. You might think, well, that, that sounds like it's gonna be quite disruptive if it's doing something every hour, but here's how it works. The very first time that it runs a backup, it is gonna take a little bit of time. That first backup is quite large, but every subsequent backup after that, it's only backing up the files that have changed. So if it does a backup at nine o'clock and backs up everything for you for that very first backup, at 10 o'clock, it's only going to look at any files that have changed between nine and 10 and then send those to the backup drive. So actually, it's a really efficient process that just ticks away in the background every hour, doesn't bother you, doesn't disrupt your work, but it is safely storing your files to that external drive. If you were to do it less frequently, let's say you were to do it once a day, for example, or maybe every 12 hours, the risk there is what if your computer's not on? I mean, like me, I have a laptop here, so I'm, I'm in and out of the office. Um, if the computer's not here and it's not connected to the external drive, that backup isn't going to run. And so my backup isn't quite, you know, giving me as good a coverage as it could have if I've got it running every hour. Every hour, there's a really good chance that I'm in the office and I'm connected to the backup drive and it's just happening seamlessly in the background. Really, really nice. The other thing we can look at here is how often to, or how long, sorry, to keep your backups for. Again, by default, it sets it to forever, which is fantastic coverage. Now, the key thing there is that what will happen over time is that this external drive that you have will just get fuller and fuller and fuller because we're keeping every single file forever. And that might be fine. If, like us, you've bought a huge 14 terabyte drive, that's probably never gonna be a problem for this laptop. But what you might like to do is just think, well, let's, let's bring it down to something a bit more reasonable, maybe a year. So one year of, of going back for every single file that you've ever had is really, really good coverage. And that's not going to overwrite and fill up one of these drives. So that's a good choice. So I like to look at it, backing up every hour, keep my backups for a year. And then the next thing I need to do is just press backup now. You'll see straight away that it starts to spin around here and it's now backing up our data. Now, don't worry, there isn't any kind of progress bar or a meter to let you know how it's doing. What you'll hear is the external drive spinning away and you'll see that it's starting to back up those files. And as I say, this first backup will take a little bit longer than every subsequent backup. But what I've noticed here when we've done the tests is this process takes about 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, you'll get a little sign up here that says the backup's been completed. And that's it, you're all set. Your data's being safely backed up now to an external drive. It'll get backed up every hour without you having to think about it. So look out for our next video where we're gonna show you how easy it is to restore files in the event that you've actually deleted one. We'll see you next time.